Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a twist ice dye. So if you're looking for a tie dye design that's pretty easy to make but still looks really cool, check this one out. I have the shirt turned inside out like normal. And I'm going to grab the shirt diagonally from one sleeve to the opposite hem and just start twisting in opposite directions. When I get the shirt twisted up, I'm going to grab the ends of the shirt again and I'm going to keep twisting until the shirt kind of starts to twist in on itself. I'm going to allow it to twist in on itself and when I can't twist it anymore, I'm going to put some rubber bands around the shirt. I've chosen some purpley pink type colors to use for this shirt. And I have a few gravity dies going outside, so I thought I would go ahead and just do this one outside along with my gravity dies. I've placed it on top of a rack and I'm making myself an ice barrier using some silicone cake molds. I have a link down below in the description for this video for where I purchased the cake molds. For my setup, I have two plastic sawhorses and I've taken two long pieces of vinyl guttering and put on top or in between the two sawhorses. Then in between the two pieces of vinyl guttering, I've placed a metal rack. And I have a plastic container down below to catch any of the runoff. Before I begin applying the dye, I'm going to spray a little bit of soda ash solution over the top of the shirt, just so that the dye will stick a little bit better and won't blow around quite so much in the wind. I'm gonna apply the dye in stripes to this shirt. And I'm starting with Mulberry from Pro Chemical and Dye, followed by Royal Purple from Grateful Dyes, Dark Cherry from Dye Spin, Boysenberry from Pro Chemical and Dye, and I'm actually going to use two lines of the Boysenberry, one on either side. And then I'm using two lines of Razzle Dazzle from Dharma as well. Now I'm going to add a pretty generous sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye. I'm going to put a pretty large chunk of ice on top of this and I want to make sure I don't rinse out all the original soda ash from the soda ash soak. The dye needs the soda ash to react and bond properly with the fabric. So here are some photos during the melting process and it's about 90 something degrees here still. So I like using the larger chunks of ice because they tend to melt a little bit slower. I've also included a photo of my setup so that you can see the whole thing. I describe it, but you really can't see it in the video. By the way, because my pieces of vinyl guttering are long enough, I can actually do two setups at the same time using the sawhorses and the vinyl guttering. So right now I have a gravity die going on this same setup. After the ice melted, I checked the bottom of the shirt and all of the dye had come through really well to the bottom. So I took the shirt and I put it inside of a plastic container that has a rack down in the bottom so that the shirt doesn't sit in any runoff dye. And I put the lid on the container and left it outside for about 24 hours. I put it inside the container to make sure that the shirt didn't dry out. Because it is so hot out here, it could dry out in a matter of hours. By the way, once a shirt dries out, the dye quits reacting with the fabric. So in this case, I probably would have been okay just simply because it was so hot out here. But if you happen to have your shirt someplace and it's really warm or you think it could potentially dry out quickly, go ahead and throw like a lid on it or stick it in a container of some kind, plastic bag, just anything to help keep the moisture in or close to the shirt so that it doesn't totally dry out. Okay, so I'm going to rinse the shirt like normal. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the shirt and I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. If you'll notice, there's quite a bit of dye coming out of the shirt though. So I didn't want to just keep rinsing in hot water 
for a really long time. So what I do in that case is I will run some really hot water in either my sink or in this case I used a container. Put a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent in the water. The Blue Dawn is pH neutral so it will help neutralize any of the soda ash that might accidentally still be left in the shirt. And that will help keep any of the excess dye from rebonding with the fabric. Then when the water cools off, I change it out and I continue that process of soaking in hot water and then rinsing it and soaking in hot water until the water is almost clear. I've actually added a few process photos of this just so that you can see kind of what I'm talking about. You don't need a whole lot of hot water, but the hot water is really good to flush out that excess dye. If you're just rinsing and not soaking your shirts, sometimes it can be a little bit deceiving because I will rinse these each time and it looks like the water is almost clear, but then when I soak them, more dye still comes out. So the soaking is really good to get out that excess dye. So when it looked like the water in the container was almost clear, I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after I washed and dried the shirt, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one looks really cool. I wasn't entirely sure what to expect, but I really like it. I think it's a fun shirt. I like all the colors. I think they work really well together. And I like the different color splits that came out of these colors. That blue is coming from the Razzle Dazzle. I've added a couple of close-ups so that you can kind of see the different dye movement and some of the color splits. Do you see what I mean about this being such an easy design? But I think it looks really cool. I think as far as a tie-dye goes, if you're maybe working with somebody who's not really experienced, but they want to have a fun shirt, this would be a great design for them to try. Like at a tie-dye party with a whole bunch of kids, this would be a really easy one for them to do. I've also included side photos of this shirt so that you can see that it looks really good all the way around. So what do you guys think about the shirt? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. So if you guys have enjoyed watching me make this video and do this experiment with this shirt, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.